Hi, thank you for uh, joining us for this panel discussion. Uh, my name is Bill Giard. I'm a principal engineer at Intel. I help lead our um, app and software efforts for cloud development. And with me, I've got um, various different experts in, in their industry around uh, OpenStack deployments and what they're doing at their local company. Uh, so we'll just kind of start with an open uh, introduction, and then we'll get into some discussions around how can we accelerate cloud deployment and address the app development needs and the evolution of where we're going from an infrastructure deployment to an accelerated app delivery and how that landscape and industry is merging. So, uh, Ruchi? Hi, I'm Ruchi Bhargav. I work for Comcast, run their infrastructure services uh, team for the technology and product group. And uh, I've been there a month. And prior to that, I was working at Intel, uh, where I was responsible both for deploying uh, OpenStack-based cloud at uh, Intel IT, as well as doing OpenStack development within the software group. Awesome. Uh, hello. My name is Chris Worgen. I work for Bloomberg uh, in New York City. I run the cloud services team. Uh, we operate, uh, I think, 11 OpenStack clusters. And uh, we're really in the transitional phase from uh, early adopters have been using us for two or three years. But we're now having uh, regular development groups um, kind of encouraged onto our platform. And we're you know, dealing with those issues. So we have a spectrum from very cloud native to less cloud native. Um, hi, everybody. My name is Edgar Magaña. I'm, um, Cloud Operations Architect and Senior Principal at Wordday. I'm also part of the uh, Board of Directors of the OpenStack Foundation and member of the User Committee. At Wordday, we deployed OpenStack since uh, two years ago. We have uh, multiple different applications running on them. We're exploring the containers part. And we are working on making the pipeline from writing my piece of code all the way to production as short as possible. Uh, awesome. So you know, I think from a you know, cloud enablement perspective within an industry and, and what we're seeing in a lot of organizations is this evolution from you know, easy resource consumption, which is getting quite good, um, to the area of accelerated you know, app software development and engaging the app uh, dev teams and dev services. Maybe uh, you guys can share your insights around at least your internal journey around um, moving from uh, infrastructure uh, capabilities to infrastructure plus uh, you know, developer services or, or app workdays. How are your developers consuming OpenStack? Sure. So uh, I think uh, the way that we got a lot of people on the platform is, as you said, uh, infrastructure on demand. So um, everybody at, at Bloomberg in um, our 4,000 developer community can just have some, uh, some resources for free. So initially, the developer community jumped on it just to have development resources. Like, you can go run a compiler or a tool or practice your make files. But um, then they rap some of them rapidly adopt some ad adopted more cloud native things and started to do CI CD, and actually some of the software, even if it doesn't run on OpenStack, moves through our clusters. So we're um, we're we're kind of you know encouraging to come in by making it e very easy, this frictionless, you know, to just get some resources and play with it. Um, so then you know now that's starting to feed into the way we do all of our software. So it's a, kind of an organic growth based on that free sample. Ah, uh, awesome. So at, uh, at Comcast, we, uh, from what I have learned over uh, in the last month, the development community is fairly savvy. Uh, and those who are not, who are moving from traditional environments, uh, they have uh, access to a whole bunch of support from the technology teams who uh, either help them design their applications to be cloud aware or cloud native. Uh, not so much cloud optimized, but uh, then they, if uh, an application requires optimization, they work with vendors to get them further optimized. So they're doing a mix of both. They're doing I a mean, mix of both. That's one of the nice parts about yeah. You know the OpenStack architecture. You can run your traditional applications on a VM and then grow, you know, your cloud native or mobile application development on on top of that. So, well, in what did we have to solve a problem that actually there were so many different application developer teams, and all of them they were running their own methodology to run those application production. They were using different platforms. Some of them they were using configuration management. They were using like uh, different kinds of configuration management. Uh, some of them they were using Puppet, Chef, and other things, right? Some people they actually wrap it up in an RPM file, give it to infrastructure, and you figure out how to put it in production. Uh, with OpenStack, we actually built a middleware in the to the application developers. So we actually we simplified the APIs called from the application developers all the way to the OpenStack APIs. 
Normally, you will call like uh, maybe a hit and play that is already our orchestration system, and it will tell you, okay, I'm gonna need uh, a couple of VMs for the UI, a couple of VMs for the database, and then web server and all those kind of things, multi-tier connected things, etc. Right? But all that's still complicated for an application developer. That the only thing that they do is writing code mm. for solving a specific problem. So with that simplification of the API, what we do is like give it, give me your RPM. Push the button, we take care of that. And that the care of that is security policies. Mm. Um, everything is predefined. Now, what the specific case is a private cloud. So we take advantage of that. We don't need to provide uh, the APIs to a public space to actually create uh, VMs on demands and, and et cetera, right? We actually have everything controlled in our private uh, space. Yeah, we see the security driver as being you know, a, you know, a key critical decision for you know a lot of different app workloads. Um, can you talk about at least uh, you know your observations around you know security in the cloud, right? In a private cloud and a you know software defined you know open stack environment, good, bad. Sure. Uh, for us uh, to be able to do open stack at all for Bloomberg, we first of all we uh, we had to basically comply with the existing security model, which means. There's a lot, a lot of net networks that are all segregated. We had to go in and build small clusters in each one of those. And we were able to do that in a great deal of uh, really expense and, and effort. And now we've actually built some credibility. So the next deployments we do will probably be converged. And we have to work with our network team. But basically, that they are now on board with cloud. So we can actually you know, do some production work and some development work uh, on the same cloud that we intend to build. But we are in transition, as I say. Initially, they had no trust in us, so we had to. I had to go and put an open stack cloud in the production network and in the dev network. Ah. We did that, um, th but that was a way to build credibility. Uh, what about you know what you've seen at Comcast or at so Intel? Comcast has a pretty uh, well-defined security zone uh, structure. So depending on what kind of an application you're designing, there are guide guidelines which the application developers already know. So it has been a well-oiled machine there. Well, for us, we manage uh, human resources information about our customers, right. payroll. Nobody knows right. what happened there. Uh, so what, but some of the requirements is actually we have uh, at the port level security policies we enforce with SDN. And then we have uh, to coordinate with the core firewall policies and sometimes with the edge firewall policies. Because uh, some of the applications that we develop, we let our customers run some of the uh, customized code in some of this app. And these apps, they live in the same cloud. Uh, yes, it's multi-tenant, but it still, it's in the same in the same cloud. So yeah, we enforce security policies. We coordinate with our core firewalls to simplify the case. But it's still, I don't think it's a, it's a problem that is 100% solved. It still requires a ticket for the core firewall. It still requires a ticket for the edge firewall. As it still requires knowing how to write security policies at the VM level, virtual network level. So I think we still need to work on that part to make it like a simple one ticket, get it done in our VM is, is connecting to whatever needs to be connected. It's not connecting to whatever it's supposed to not do. Yeah, within Intel, within our IT implementation, we're actually seeing a, a significant improvement in our security management practices by going software-defined network and even cloud native apps. Um, you know, one of the big challenges with Security it really is in you know privileged access management misconfiguration or software vulnerabilities and and as we um, you know uplift our code and make them more cloud aware and take advantage of cloud architectures we're seeing just a, a significant reduction in our software vulnerabilities that get deployed in that landscape so it's it's kind of merging our cloud strategy and our security strategy is one is helping the other which is nice. In fact, in Intel IT, uh, I, I believe it's now in production, there's this capability, what they call Automate IT, which is addressing what you were talking about at Workday, where it takes so many different steps to get an application deployed on the internet. And that basically helped uh, Intel IT application developers to bridge that gap from 15 days or months to a day or so. While keeping it, uh, you know, enforcing security policies it, exactly. consistently, yeah. right? Consistent deployment. So it's not only got the fast time to market, but security implications as well. Um, 
So what about you know kind of your developer feedback? Uh, you know, so we, you know I think one of the common challenges that we hear is we've deployed infrastructure, we've deployed OpenStack, we've got you know kind of the operations engineering things working well, um, but our developers are still having you know requests for new capabilities and and so meeting those you know new different markets of uh, you know what, what are your app teams asking for? Uh, so we have fantastic feedback on. Uh, features and control, um, you know, you can create your own VM, you can size it appropriately. If you got it wrong, you can tear it down, make a new one. Um, you can use, you know, orchestration systems. Um, what we need to do is probably um, tackle higher performance mm. cases. In our particular case, our storage is all Ceph. Okay. So uh, it's, it's very durable. We can, we can administer it, but it doesn't have the highest IOPS. Uh. So our real-time database stuff cannot, it can run on, for development, but not for production. Ah. So we want to uh, increase performance. We also have people come to us who just want enormous resources, like a machine with a terabyte of RAM that's bigger than our actual underlying hypervisors. Mm -hmm. So um, we have to kind of uh, do a lot of work on our platform to, to hit our um, most high performance uh, users. So you do a, a hybrid kind of model where you have some bare metal systems, and then you've got some uh, hypervisor? Uh, absolutely. Someone comes to me and says, I need I need a three gigahertz CPU and I need uh, you know, a huge amount of RAM. I'm like, but go buy hardware with our blessing. But what we're doing is trying to, first of all, uh, the low hanging fruit of apps that should be on cloud, stop buying more machines, keep the power budget more stable. And that's actually, we're already demonstrating a um, reduced uh, trajectory of power. I won't say we're losing less, but we're growing less, so. Uh, interesting. Yeah, I, I just wanna add, performance of course is what they ask them most of the time. Before we move an application with uh, legacy hardware, bare metal into a virtualized environment, the very first thing we do is like we will compare how the performance degradation in that one. We know that moving from bare metal in the same kind of scenario, it will be between 12, 15 performance degradation. Mm -hmm. Like the amount of time that a, uh, a specific job with the same number of cores, the same amount of memory will take in the bare metal compared with a virtual machine. So there should be a certain trade off, and that's what I talk to the application developers. If we work in virtual machines, we're gonna get all these benefits. You're not making use of all of them. So you have to scale your application. You need to think about it like, you don't have any more one server that you need to take care of. Now we can have like 10 different, 10 virtual machines. The same thing, right? Cattle versus pet. Um, now design your application to scale horizontally and think about that we will give you 10, 15, as many VMs as you, as you want. If on the top of that you're still having performance degradation that you can't afford, uh, we're moving into containers. So that's yeah. that's helping us on that one. But the, the real usage and performance will be when you run the containers directly on bare metal, right? So you may use Ironic to deploy uh, provisioning a bare metal server, and then you use Magno to actually run a Kubernetes cluster on the top of that. That will be when we're, we're moving forward. That's what the application developers is asking for. We have the same, I think, performance is, uh, uh, you know, three, uh, it's driven both by the application developers and by our own uh, optimization needs. So the app developers want performance, they want reliability, and that's something which, you know, is always a struggle to maintain with, uh, you know, with using Ceph, our performance issues are as everybody knows, there are plenty. And uh, with respect to ut driving from an op uh, running an op infrastructure which is highly optimized, managing the uh, utilization, it's not an easy thing with OpenStack today. So yeah. and uh, so driving th towards a highly utilized, highly optimized, well-performing cloud is the biggest challenge from yeah, app development. Yeah, tightly uh, coupled with the request for performance ends up becoming you know telemetry or visibility around what how the system is working uh, and so you know we, we've seen at least in our internal um, Intel IT implementations a lot of work to try to you know uh, you know provide additional analytics additional telemetry frameworks around how things are performing you should statistics and um, you know we've got capabilities that uh, you know we're working on to help you know improve telemetry with uh, things like our, our SNAP capabilities for an open telemetry framework. And so um, what are you guys doing in that space to help expose and address some of the performance? So we've actually looked at SNAP, and we are very keen on going and uh, you know, playing with it and using it. And uh, we, I mean, we just spoke to them a couple of weeks ago. Right. So. 
Uh, we're currently using um, a mix of you know, graphite, Zabbix, okay. these kinds of things. Um, the guy who does that isn't here, but uh, he's looking at Prometheus, which I think ah. is an open source project spun off from a Google thing. Um, one thing we are finding is um, you know, OpenStack is great for building such things. Like uh, we have apps that haven't moved off uh, big, big Iron, but their, uh, their dashboards are they're being built much in a much more modern way, and um, so that you know at least half the team is getting the benefit of what we're giving them with you know infrastructure on demand and uh, you know software defined uh, applications. So. No, no, just pretty much the same. Uh, connecting to login system, uh, uh, connecting to monitoring systems. Uh, all the application they send all the logs to one place, so we have Elasticsearch. So uh, the NOC uh, knows what's going on at a certain moment. So. Um, because it's most of the applications that we have right now are still stateless. Uh, if some of the application actually dies or, or something happens, the customer should not have any impact. So there will not be a customer ticket. But our uh, network operation center should say, like, OK, this VM has a degradation, something is going on, or maybe the hypervisor. Uh, we deploy all these in availability zones, so we guarantee that even if the server goes down, sometimes even if the rack goes down, we will have a VM with the same application running in a different place. However, we need to have a very quick uh, reaction time to spin up another VM. We still, we still don't have that functionality like in another cloud management system that you can reprovision a VM it, if it dies in a certain moment at a certain time, right? It's like a meta scheduler for OpenStack, which is still an idea that so many projects are thinking about it. Yeah, I, um, I think the, the you know, pace of delivery that we see in app development is increasing quite significantly. When we first started doing OpenStack, we were targeting, hey, you know, g get a VM and, and reduce it from you know, weeks to a day. And then we said, hey, day to an hour, and now it's in a minute. And then the app teams are saying, deploy my code in a minute, not just get a VM in a minute. Um, and so the nice thing about you know, the different sets of requests that we get for you know, database on demand, uh, you know, platform on demand is just moving faster. Are you seeing that pace of innovation just increasing demand from your app teams as well? And you know, what, what are your thoughts on that in the last couple of minutes? So at Comcast, a lot of the apps are very, you know, definitely they are either cloud aware or cloud native. And so they, they do develop and they are very high performing apps, which most of the consumers in the US, you know, like the video apps and stuff. And they are hi truly hybrid. They are, part of them are on our private cloud. Some of them are on the public cloud. So, uh, and they all are designed for failure. So uh, we don't get the need for you know uh, to deploy it in a minute, but uh, ideally that would be great for some uh, quick app developers' uh, needs. Yeah, especially with mi microservices, smaller Mi apps exactly. coming up. Yeah. yeah, that's the key word, right? Microservices. I was talking about the trade-off, right? The trade-off that we are working with the application developers. Now they get it. They need to microsegment the also applications, so they require things to be more and faster. So yeah, but on the other hand is. It's easy to actually deploy it, um, 50 megabytes of a code at uh, one gigabyte that it used to be in the past. Very true. We, uh, we just have a spectrum. We honestly have um, some people still building pets. I compile my application, okay. I deploy my application, and my application runs. Other people have uh, fully automated pipelines for scaling up um, Spark and Hadoop clusters on top of OpenStack uh, to, to run like a large machine learning job and then tear it all down many times a week. So we support that entire range, and you know, my, my boss would prefer if everyone moved to, um, you know, the CI/CD and uh, you know, uh, cattle, not pets. But uh, right. you know, we can't move our entire development organization, uh, you know, at a fixed pace. So luckily, we 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 allow that spectrum, and it's very very popular. Yeah, I think um, you know the nice part, at least the you know what I'm observing is the ability to support. You know, both the new stuff that are you know custom configuration, the pets, right, um, versus the the common you know standard web configurations, and getting that on an open you know common infrastructure that you can manage and then go deploy. Um, so I, I think you know to just kind of wrap up what I'm hearing. You know, we see a lot of you know a pace of innovation happening with the dev teams, requests for demands, you know, a mix of traditional cloud native applications, and, and really this uh, you know merge from you know what amounts to a infrastructure focused uh, cloud deployment uh, into a you know line of business plus infrastructure alignment around how do you speed uh, you know response to the business is that accurate from what i'm hearing fairly accurate yeah yeah definitely okay um, any other final thoughts in the last couple of seconds or i just want to say that 
the only recommendation is working very well for us. Uh, Cross-functional teams work very well. So don't design an infrastructure or a, a, a platform as a service without talking to your application <laughs> developers. So you need to get them into a common this process. Yeah, I, I think the, the common um, you know, best practice that I've seen where organizations have really accelerated their deployment is they've engaged it as both an app and an infrastructure team engagement and they're in strong arm and arm. So I want to thank you for um, sharing at least your journey and, and insights around the app and uh, you know, how, how to get your app and line of business teams engaged with your infrastructure team. So uh, thank you. Thank you, Bill. Thank Thanks you, everybody. Have a good day.